Hello, everyone. It's time for another episode of View of Ninja Steel. And, well, Powers is Ninja Steel. Well, I don't know if these reviews are going to continue on. I mean, I'm trying to get to 100 views at the most. But, yeah, it takes a long freaking dang time. But anyways, let's talk about a few things that actually are upbeat. Number one is the fact of the title of the episode, Live and Learn. Sonic song that I ever heard of, Live and Learn. It's like, yeah, that so reminded me of the Sonic song. And I'm like, you know, it would be very cool if they were able to be able to feature that song in there. That would have been awesome, especially if they did the monster fight with it. That would be kind of funny. But anyways, we get to see the brand new monster, the monster of the freaking week, as people call it. And it is the roller skater monster. And because, well, you know, they have to change the name and everything. His name is Spinferno, which is quite funny. And I remember when listening to someone else and they were like, yeah, you know, this this monster right here is made for Power Rangers. He was so made for Power Rangers. And I'm like, well, it will be kind of ridiculous and funny. But, of course, the funniest part has to be the fact of they didn't even use any of the footage, any of the thoughts that they actually put in the original version with this com- when it comes to this monster. And I think he actually showed up two times. I think in the series, he showed up two times in the series. But I might be wrong. On the other hand, it could actually be a... I don't think it was... A, I'm not sure. Anyways... We go to Mick, Robobot, and also Brody. And they're actually doing the same thing that they learned that his dad did, which is creating new ninja stars from the Ninja Steel. And they did it, and they put it in the Kelm slash, a.k.a. their viewing go- globe, a.k.a. the Ninja Star Nexus, and out pops in some new stars, which is the Element Stars. A little side note for those who actually want to know about the old original version. The original version, those ninja stars were most likely created by A, the blacksmith, or B, from aliens. Not sure which. But even so, you actually had those shurikens, and those shurikens were given from the last ninja. And he told them, hey, if you want to become the last ninja, if you want to surpass me, you have to learn how to use these. So he gave them to his... Yeah, he gave it to his grandchildren, and, well, let me just continue on with this before I actually talk about that part. So anyways, Brody's dressed like a ninja, and I'm like, if you're going to start school, why are you dressed as a ninja right now? And then we come to later on to find the rest of them are in ninja dojis as well. Uh, And, of course, like what happened in Power Ranger Samurai, when it came to the wood kanji, Instead of calling it wood, we just basically say forest. I don't know why. Why do we continue doing that? I'm not sure. What? Are we to the point of where kids already know that (laughs) he said wood? (laughs) It's like, I don't think so. Kids are still innocent in some sort of way. I don't think we're going to get to the point of where people will giggle and say, (laughs) he said wood. (laughs) But anyways, they are actually training with it. And this is where I come to the original version saying in the original version, they trained with it. And it was so freaking damn funny from the fire one to blow up in their face from the water one to blow up in their face from. Was it wind? No, I don't think it was wind, fire, water, wood. That was kind of funny. Wood that happened with the white ninja, the white ninja tangled herself And now she's stuck like that. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Metal, which metal was the funniest part. Metal actually summons pans and it hit their heads. They're like, oh, which that was pretty funny. It's like, yeah, that was a funny moment. And I'm missing one more element. Oh, well, you guys will comment down below and say, oh, you missed this one. Stupid. But anyways, yeah. So I thought that's what's going on. And. I think it was very cool at first they were going to do it. At first they were going to actually show that the Rangers don't know what they're doing. And the Yellow Ranger actually showed how the water one sucks. But I guess that actually shows, you know, that was actually foreshadowing. I didn't actually catch that until just now. I'm thinking, oh. And I thought when it came to the metal, when they used the metal element, the hubcaps. I'm like, oh, that would have been awesome if they would have did that. But sadly, instead of disappearing because the hubcaps came and they're like, oh, frick this, man. We got to go somewhere else because my gosh, this this sucks right now. 
But instead, no, they just rushed off to school instead of actually getting hit by those. I prefer they would have got hit by those and they're like, well, f- this, we'll do this later. <laughs> yeah, I would prefer they would actually have did that, an extra extended version of where it's like they did do the metal one and bong, all four of them got hit in the head. And they're like, well, screw this. We got to go to school. We'll do this later. And you know, some of them are holding your heads and everything. But nope, missed out opportunity. Thanks a lot, guys. And I was questioning, I'm like, hmm, so is Brody actually going to go with the ninja gear on? And no, he doesn't actually. No, no, that's good news. But the craziest news has to be the fact of Brody actually skipped school to face the monster. Yeah, a monster appeared and his data comm actually still connected to the ship. So I thought that was a good advantage. I thought it was a real good advantage that he could have still used, but okay, fine, freak it, screw it. But anyways, yeah, so... He went against the monster, and I was like, Troy. Troy from freaking Super Mega Force was so say, that is a bad thing to do. But we can still go to Troy and say, hey, I'm um, stupid. Didn't you skip school looking for Robo Knight? And that's when he backs off. That's when Troy has to back off and say, <laughs> yeah, that's the funniest part. It's like, yep, Troy, you Boy Scout, you screwed yourself. But it was a friend in need. A freaking world was in danger by a freaking dumb monster. Why the hell is it important to save a friend? But when it comes to thousands of people getting screwed over by a monster, oh no, he you know, just skips school for that. But when, when one person kind of needs help, it's like, oh, fuck, we need to stop everything to look for him. It's like, yeah, you need to know where your priorities are, buddy. I laughed at part of where the monster called, <laughs> he said, Earth Twerp. That was funny. That was pretty funny. Yeah, that was, that was good humor. So, apparently, the data comms able to give Brody advice. And I, personally, I thought it kind of sucked because, like, you, you should chain him up. And he chained him up, and then he broke out. And it's like, you should use water to cool him down. You should cool him down and use water, which I'm like, okay, well, that advice helped. But. Personally, I'm like, the data comm kind of sucks when it comes to advice. It's not like you should bind them up first. Then after that, you should you cool them down. It's like, yeah, if you use both of those at once. That would have made a good vice. But one and the other is like, yeah, he could actually have defeated them very easily. But OK, well, the freaking data comm sucks, man. It kind of sucks. So the good news is that Brody as the Red Ranger slash Red Ninja is getting viral. Yes, people actually, crazy enough, people actually were close enough to the fight where they actually filmed it. I'm like, why the hell are you filming it? Run, dumbass. He got firepower. Get the freak out of there. <laughs> it's like, damn, that's as bad as what happened in Mario Warfare Power Rangers, the movie, where the conductor's like, Oh my gosh, look at that big monster. I should I should take a photo of this and show it on YouTube. I also film it on YouTube. And instead of the freaking conductor actually being able to push the brakes, he decides to just look and film it. It's like, that's the bad part. It's like, dude, you're going to get freaking day almost killed. And there's a bunch of people on that freaking monorail. Dude, where's your priorities? But anyways, the other rangers found out that he did that. And then, oh, good Lord. Looks like Victor is definitely going to be something for the series. Kind of like Broken Skull. It's not even like Broken Skull. I think kind of she he's kind of like that girl from Dino Thunder. In a way, he's kind of like that. I bet there's more and I can actually think about that later on. But for right now, yeah, introducing the new Broken Skull. But this one's actually a prep boy. Yeah, prep boy. He wants to be famous. <laughs> Yes, and he wants to be popular. So, yeah, when he finds out that the Rangers are popular than him now, he wants to find some way to top them. Well, anyways, we get introduced to one of their teachers, or maybe just the teacher, period, because it looks like to me that she did math class. She did geography. It looks like, yeah, they're actually, which doesn't make sense, personally. It's like, you should just stick with the math thing. Like, you should stick with the math thing, then... Later on, you go to another class. The class does the same thing of yeah, geography. And, but it seems like they have one homeroom teacher who teaches at least three types of classes, which does scratch my head and say, where the frick are you? 
where the frick are you to the point of where it's like, yeah, we're down on staff, so we need at least one, we need one or two teachers to buckle down on three classes. <laughs> it's like, I don't get that. And of course, because I'm a guy, I looked at the teacher. I'm like, oh, she's okay. She's all right. I think the principal is more attractive than she is. I know. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I'm a bot. I'm a guy. I'm a guy. I have to at least talk about that a little bit. But anyways, yes, we got a quick intro of Brody. Yeah, that was crazy. It's like, okay, this is Brody. Okay, now let's do some work. It's like, wow. Usually when it comes to this, like, Eric got a new student today. Come on up and tell us about yourself. And say it's like, we have a new student today. His name is Brody. Okay, there he is. All right, sit down. Let's get to work. It's like, what the fuck, man? I mean, gee whiz. Are you getting work so hard that you're not going to actually allow people to truly get to know him or something? But anyways, yeah, so Brody uses his data com for class stuff, which to me, I'm like, it It actually does make sense, but it could be it could make sense a different way than where they went. But anyways, yeah, so he uses it as a calculator and I don't know. It technically is a calculator, but you're actually telling it instead of typing it in. So I don't really see it as true cheating. And it's kind of crazy where he says 33 Earth minutes. It's like, okay, so no one's going to call him out and say that's weird. No one's going to say that's weird as frick. And of course, on the other hand, they could just label him as a big nerd because, come on, man, saying Earth minutes. Kind of nerdy. Anyways, yes, so Brody's using it for everything, and it kind of helps, but the thing I was talking about is the fact of for him to truly be high school ready, it does make sense that the data comm could actually have been thought up as his tutor, you know? Like, for instance, think about what happened in Wally. You had the captain who didn't know crap. But as soon as he had a thirst for knowledge, he kept on going and going and going, asking lots and lots more questions and getting truly, yeah, he's getting knowledge. He's getting, he's learning. That's exactly what I thought they were going to do in that road is the fact of, oh, so the data comm could do that crap. That means that technically the data comm could have actually gotten to the point of where he was high school ready instead of actually being something but yeah, he has a big freaking hindrance. This is a, something that he's using way too much. He depends on it way too much. Yeah, I thought it would be like an aid. It would actually be something. But anyways, yes, Victor actually figured out that he's going down and talking to his data comm. And, he's, and Victor's like, dude, dude, he's cheating. He's cheating. He's cheating. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, wow, Victor. Well, I mean, I can understand that you're too freaking damn preppy of a schoolboy and want to win at everything, but motherfucker, really? Really, man? You snitch? <laughs> you freaking snitch? I can understand. I can understand, and I can actually say, yeah, Brody was using it way too damn much, but on the other hand, I'm like, how else is he gonna learn? I mean, what if like some weeks later she says the same answers or same questions especially geography and stuff and what if he learns it what if he remembers it and it's like data com oh wait i remember yeah and i'm like ah but yeah good job freaking damn victor good 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 job good job for you victor <laughs> so brody had to take it off and sadly victor had a plan but of course since victor actually isn't one of those pieces of trash bastards yeah, and I actually have to say, yep, the writers made it that way. I would figure, why not have Victor steal it from him? I mean, come on, he is kind of a bit of a bully in a way, in a certain way he is. So it's like, yeah, for him to steal it would actually make a better idea instead of what happened, which, yeah, the data comm just dropped out of his backpack. Me, personally, I'm like, what kind of backpack does he have? Because, mother really? I think Chances are the data comm would be so deep in his backpack, no one can freaking get it. Kind of like a purse. But instead, no, it just dropped out very easily. And Victor's minion, his name is Monty. I know his name now. He's such a butt kisser. But anyways, Victor decides to use it to become more popular than the Power Rangers. And I'm like, seriously, man? Out of all the things you can ask the data comm, you're going to ask how to become more popular 
than the freaking Power Rangers. Me personally, if like if I had one thing to do, and then I, of course, me, I would give the Datacom back because it's not mine. But I would at least get like one question in, and me, I would ask how I can actually get a car without breaking the law or anything. So if yes, you know, like if the Datacom could actually say, okay, here we go, and I actually take notes and find out how to actually get like decent amount of money, heck. There you go. I'll be set for life. I'm going to give it the data comm back because if it has all the answers, I would. Ele- oh, crap. You can even ask what's the meaning of life. Holy frick. You can even ask like one of the that's most likely how I could actually get the car and everything is solving one of the six math equations. No one have solved yet. So it would be pretty cool to actually ask him one of that questions. And. Yeah. That would have been freaky damn cool, but instead, yeah, okay, good, Victor, good for you, good for you, want to go popular. So, like I said, yeah, the datacom is a hindrance, and well, Brody is looking for it now, Victor, because the answer was to destroy a monster, to defeat a monster, it's how it become more popular than freaking now the Power Rangers. So, Victor shows up, and at this point, looking at his freaking outfit, I'm like, hey, this so reminds me of that movie that movie that freaking episode where bocus skull was asleep i forgot i think it was like some horror nightmare dream yeah like monster did that and they dreamt they were kind of like superheroes and it was crazy as frick and it was so stupid but i do have to admit i would marvel that what the frick happened especially the part of where you allow bocus skull to be part of the freaking megazord they were able to summon the freaking megazord and try to fight the monster and he sucked at it it was messed the frick up and i was like what in the hell am i watching same deal with this what the hell am i watching so, yeah, um, Victor does have a weapon. That's the good news. He's doing better than Bulk and Skull, which they only have crappy kung fu moves. He <laughs> has crappy martial arts. But this time, Victor actually is a little bit smarter than freaking Bulk and Skull. But sadly, his weapon does suck. His weapon is a bazooka made out of an extinguisher, which I'm like, okay. Well, either A, his freaking weapon sucks, or B, he doesn't know how to freaking use an extinguisher. If it is the whole, he actually just had a regular extinguisher and not a a bazooka made from an extinguisher, then I have to admit, that's some bull crap, man. Damn. I mean, you can't really beat the monster just extinguisher. Only thing that's going to do is make him run away again. Oh, yeah, he kind of did. <clears throat> when I heard defeat the monster, I thought defeat as in, in destroy, eliminate him. I guess defeat as in maybe make him run away again, which I guess that would, I guess that's would work. Well, anyways, the monster noticed the idiots have the data com. He got them away. Yeah, they got thrown away. And now the monster has the data com. And, uh, well, the messed up part is that when I was watching it, I couldn't really see the monster get the data com. That's the messed up part. It's like, yeah, he got the data com, but I didn't see the part of where he picked it up. And I got a little bit confused on that. But anyways, the Rangers, excluding Brody, actually came there to fight the monster. Brody, again, is looking everywhere for it. Mick had a freaky mid-transformation of him being a skeleton. Yeah, his head with the skeleton body. I'm like, ugh, ugh. Man, that's as messed up as watching the Treehouse of Horror one. So anyways, at least the good news is Mick actually is beneficial because Mick was there to truly say, hey, you don't need it. You don't really need the data com. You don't need to ask every way of strategy, which personally I'm like, well, he didn't actually do that in the first two episodes either. So I don't see how now he's going to depend on a data com more than anything. Which that's, But I do have to admit, even though he doesn't need the data com, he still needs it to the fact of the data com is used to find out it's like a good go ahead to know oh frick the monster's coming i think you definitely need the data com but you don't need to overuse it that's all i'm saying is like yeah you still need it but you don't need to abuse it like you did previously so brody goes to help the monster has it apparently yay i'm glad and the messed up part is that i mock the fact of you have all the rangers say and here and here and here and like Oh my gosh, that's that's horrible. 
that it's horrible, man. Uh, so the Morpher seems capable, but it doesn't spin. Yeah, they don't spin it still. It seems capable of spinning, but it doesn't spin. Again, I still have the assumption of this is the U.S. version they're using. This is the Morpher that they're using. It's the U.S. version. And I still have to say, um, Bandai America, you're a dumbass idiot because if you put the spin in there, it makes the toy better. Lots of reviewers wouldn't say crap about it of how they have to manually spin it. And not only that, but at least the good news is that the actors don't have to be like spinning in the wind, spinning in the wind. That's what they're doing It's spinning in the wind. They don't even spin the freaking thing. They're just spinning in the wind, which I'm like, man, you guys make the worst call ever. That is messed up. I can't wait till people actually start pointing it out and say, hell yeah, you're right. <laughs> and as soon as that happens, I'll just be so freaking damn funny. But at least the good news is that we got roll calls. And now they say spirit of the ninja, spirit of the ninja, which I forgot. Was it? I think the red one was like burning radiance, red ninja. It's like, yeah, I don't see why you guys just going to do spirit of the ninja. It's like, you might as well just allow them to be the original thing. Like, burning radiance or brilliant radiance is like yeah i think it's better to do that one because spirit of ninja is like mm, yeah, it's good and all but you could do better you could do so much better and in the original one i think this was the episode to actually cement the idea of the red ranger blue ranger rivalry because yeah the ultimate i mean not ultimate the last ninja you had the Red Ranger saying, I'm going to be the last ninja. And then you had the Blue Ranger saying, I'm going to be the last ninja. And now you have a headbutting rivalry. And I think this one's when Draco Maru shows up. Holy freak. <laughs> yep. AKA, um, I guess it would be Ninja Steel Megazord Dragon Formation. If you're going to still go with that crap. Hopefully it'll say Dragon Mode. At least it'll say Dragon Mode. It's kind of funny to say, oh, they, the trap, huh? And yeah, the freaking foreshadowing worked off. The fact of the Yellow Ranger actually used the water. Yeah. Yeah. I still think this was a two-part or at least two episodes. I could swear it was. But anyways, finally, a Megazord. Finally, we get to see the Megazord. And I laughed at the part of where the Yellow Ranger actually... No, the Red Ranger said to the Yellow Ranger, I'm going to rock him. And I'm like, oh, you're going to throw rocks at him. That's kind of funny. And there's some egg going on, but finally you got the Megazord. And I don't see why they call out the Megazord while it's getting turned into the Megazord. It's like, it doesn't make sense why you have to say, oh, Robo Red Zord, Dragon Zord. It's like, you don't need to do that crap. I don't think you need to do that crap. I don't think you need to. And, well, you got new stars for the Megazord again. Yeah. So just like previously, where you have. The super char dino charger. Now you have freaking shurikens called master mode. And now they have some new form while in the Megazord. Personally, I look at it first, I was like, oh fuck, man. You just already destroyed the Red Ranger's upgrade form. But okay, yeah, sure. I think the sucky part is gonna be the fact of where yeah, when you get to the Red Ranger having his own Zord and you do the final attack, it's like, oh frick. How in the world are you going to freaking do that? Because the original form was used in that one. So I wonder how that's going to work out. Are you going to edit it out? Are you going to add a new scene? Or are you going to straight up? Well, anyways, we'll get to that when it happens. But the real crazy part is what the chainsaw. The freaking new sword that the lead Red Ranger has. Or lead Ranger, depending on which form they have. Holy frick, it's a chainsaw sword. What the frick, man? Talk about Overdrive will be like, that's some bull crap. We had so many stuff over here, like a pickaxe and a shovel, and you guys get to have the chainsaw? That's some bull crap. And I agree with them. I'm like, yeah, that's some bull crap if you were able to do that back in the day. And of course, well, you know, Disney had it first. Yeah, Disney had that. Anyways, <laughs> amazing Megazord. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, the thing that needs to be talked about is the fact of reason why you don't see Dragon 
mode in the freaking Megazord in this episode. Well, the last episode that should have actually had the Megazord, they cut it out and allowed the four Rangers to shoot at him. Or oh, five Rangers to shoot at the Mega at the monster, killing him. Then you had in this one where it's like, yeah, the dragon one would be shown in this one. But since they didn't show the Megazord in the last version, they have to keep the Megazord in this version, meaning that they actually have to be like, oh, fuck, what we're going to do? Well, we're just going to have to bring a monster that the first rank Megazord, the original Megazord formation fought mode fought. And there we go. So, yeah, that's why they're like, yeah, we can't do anything about that. So, yeah, we got to. <laughs> that's what happened. Yeah, that's what happened, folks. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, guys, that they did this craziness right here. It was like, what the frick? Anyways, yeah, the villains had some banter. I do have to applaud the fact that the banter was pretty decent. Or the fact of their conversations are like, oh, the Megazord is good. It's because since the show this is a show to them, they're like, yeah, you have to talk about the show things and ratings and all that other stuff. But it looks like the team has communicators now, and they're called Ninja Comms. And it looks like the data com is not connected to the ship anymore, meaning, guess what? They won't even know when the monster is coming, which is kind of messed up, personally. At least the good news is that it's after the, it's after the Rangers, so that's the good news, is that they're not going to actually attack the freaking city or anything. But, 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 I guess technically it's not really a but because Lady Odious might take over and say, freak you, freak your damn show. We're doing it my way. We're going to cause freaking damn panic. And hopefully that means that, yeah, they'll attack the city. But for right now, it's just, we want the Rangers. Attack the Rangers. And it's like, that's not what the show did. The show didn't attack only the Rangers. Yeah, the show never actually did attack only the Rangers. Heck, Jewelger, that is the blood game, that actually has a, in quotations, game show thing. They even were like, no, we're not just going to attack the Rangers. We're going to attack the world, man. We're going to destroy the world. You're supposed to appease me. You're supposed to make me feel like, hey, 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 this is a good show. Yeah, they're not like, oh, just attack the Rangers, attack the Rangers, attack the Rangers. Like, no, no, no. It's like, even when it came to the show, when it comes to Juoger, they attacked the freaking damn city. They still caused panic and everything to the citizens. While in this version for right now, it seems like they're way focused on the Rangers are your people that you're supposed to beat. Even though I'm like, um, but still though, you have too much footage of people getting attacked. Of course, that means that they can cut all of that stuff of the people and then that means that no more stunts and no more extra people have to be in there. But whatever, frick, whatever. Let's just get to the last point of where we got Victor. And Victor, oh man, I thought Victor was going to get pissed off about the fact of he got mocked by everyone or someone mocked him. Yeah, someone actually took the footage and then remixed it. And instead of that, he's freaking okay with it. He's happy. He's like, I am popular in the Power Rangers now. I am happy. And I'm like, man, I kind of expected you to be pissed off saying I want to be taken seriously. But instead, he's okay being a freaking jokester. So sure, why not? I guess. Why not? Anyways, this episode right here, I do have to say. The episode has good and bad things. I mean, the good thing is that you had the data com and you had Brody getting in there and being in high school. They showed like some techniques and techniques and stuff. They did have a lesson to be learned. That's kind of good, I guess. And well, the bad part is like, yeah, the freaking more stuff that they have to deal with due to the fact that you want it to be a game show. It's like, yeah, I think there will be major consequences you have to pay. And not only the fact that, it's just the other part of where the Mega Sword should have been in the freaking second episode. And now you're going to have to play backtrack because now in the fourth episode, you might as well have to have the freaking dragon mode in that one. And, oh, don't get me started. The fact of in the toy line, the dragon mode sucks. It's sucky looking. So hopefully when dragon mode does show up, they might have a toy line already out of another Megazord, which I'm like, well, that's how they're going to get their money because they already made another alteration of the freaking damn Tusk Megazord in Megazord form. So it doesn't make sense why they wouldn't just say, yep, making more money. 
releasing Dragon Zord mode in Mega Zord form because we get more money. Dumbass freaking damn parents said they want to buy Mega Zord instead of Xeri Zord. So fuck it. And I'm like, yep, that's most likely what's gonna happen. That's most likely what's going to happen. But for right now, anyways, thank you for watching. I know there's some boos out there about this thing, and there's some yays, and then there's like lots of people who are ghosts and don't want to watch it. But anyways, thank you for watching. Anyways, stay tuned for another, maybe another episode review. Not sure.